Welcome back to Memory Episode 3. Today we're going to be looking at Unreal Engine and how they do some of the cool things in their engine with C++ code. So I've been studying a lot of these uh, coding tutorials and trying to figure it out, but also we're going to look at the source code and see if we can explain, well, what all this U property stuff means, basically. So when you code with Unreal Engine and C++, you have things like these macros called you property and you give it some stuff and you and you often put these right before you declare a variable or a function and stuff like that and it does something very special to the life cycle that we're going to examine to see a real world case of the life cycle and hopefully this kind of brings the previous two tutorials together uh, into into something that's like hey you actually really can do this so stay tuned one of the things we see here is blueprint function libraries. So there's a lot of things you can do with C++ and Unreal. One of the cool things you can do is make static helper functions and you see that these need certain headers and they basically only contain static methods that are available to your whole project. That's something I'm kind of used to doing in C++ when making libraries because that's a lot of times what you end up doing. So Unreal does have some macros that enable that. The thing they do is they expose properties in the editor. So Unreal of course has a big old editor. So if you have things in your programming that are labeled as you property edit anywhere and they're attached to some object or something, they will be editable from the engine interface. So there is a tie there and a flag and a bit of code that handles making that available to Unreal. So let's see if we can find that. Before we get to the code, let's go ahead and define exactly what we're looking at. And I think it's best explained here in gameplay architecture about programming and scripting. So when programming gameplay elements using C++ code, each module can contain C++ classes. As you'll see here by this little thing, functions and properties in a class for each module. And I'm just gonna go ahead and read some of this. Each class defines a template for a new actor or object within the class header file. The class and any class functions and properties are declared. Classes can also contain structs, data structures that help with organization and manipulation of related properties. Structures can be defined on their own. Interfaces allow additional gameplay behavior to be implemented by different classes. When programming with Unreal Engine, it is possible to have standard C++ classes, functions, and variables. These can be defined using standard C++ syntax. However, uClass, uFunction, and uProperty macros can be used to make Unreal aware of these new classes, functions, and variables. For instance, a variable with a declaration prefaced by a U property macro can be garbage collected by the engine and can be displayed and edited with Unreal Editor. There are also U interface, U struct, and U struct macros, and keywords for each macro that can be used to specify the behavior of the class function, property interface, or struct within Unreal Engine and Unreal Editor. In addition to the above macros, there is uParam macro that is primarily used when exposing C++ code to blueprints. To see examples of uParam being used, see exposing gameplay elements to blueprints documentation. And here we have the main ones listed. Now, I'm not entirely sure how much I should be digging into how to program with Unreal Engine, but we do have to look at some of this. So I'll just show a few things that I found cool basically about it. So when you're templating or I don't know if templating is the right word, when you're making classes in Unreal, they can have a prefix. And if it has a prefix of A, extends from a base class with spawnable objects. And if it has a, a prefix of U, it is a base class of all gameplay objects. These objects cannot be, or these cannot be directly instanced in the world. They must belong to an actor. They're generally objects like components. So that is that. Okay, so I could go through and talk about each one of these in the gameplay architecture, but they're rather long-winded and specific, so I'm not going to do that. I'm really trying to give an overview, but I would highly recommend, of course, reading through all this documentation, or at least what's relevant to you if you are, in fact, doing some C++ programming in Unreal, as it does seem to be rather thorough. So let's see if we can get to the part where these macros are actually put in place, because we know basically what they do. They add properties to classes and functions and things, and they make them available in the lifetime 
of the Unreal Editor. So basically what it does here is something called reflection with the Unreal Property System. And as defined in this semi-old article by Michael Nolan, reflection is the ability of a program to examine itself at runtime. This is hugely useful and is a foundational technology of the Unreal Engine powering many, many systems such as the details, panels in the editor, serialization, garbage collection, network replication, Blueprint, C++ communication, and so on. It does say, however, C++ doesn't natively support any form of reflection, so Unreal has its own system to harvest, query, and manipulate information about C++ classes, structs, member variables, etc. The reflection system is opt-in, and that's where these preprocessors come in. These are how you opt into the reflection system. So if I'm understanding this correctly, when it does its reflection, it looks for these, checks out everything, and sets up the engine appropriately for whatever you're looking at. So just looking at what's available to us through Unreal, just the, the public objects, there is a U object, which looks like it is a type called no export types. And when we take a look at that, it looks like it is a set of reflection mirrors of C++ structs defined in core and core U object. And this is like a locked file, read only. It looks like this is some basic editor settings that are set up within Unreal. Oh, there's log times and just all kinds of stuff for the editor. It looks like pixel formats and stuff you can't change. So that's pretty interesting that they're using this to configure the editor itself just as you can with your games. And if we keep going, we'll see that this is uh, about 1500 lines of things, including the direct base class for all UE4 objects. And then it tells you where the full class is. So it looks like you can only see so much through the editor itself, but if you go to where you installed the Unreal Engine, I have it on my D drive under Program Files and then Epic Games, there's UE 4.25, we will see some stuff here. So let's go into Engine and you'll see Source. You can also see a lot of other cool folders to poke around at if you get curious. But we're going to look at Source and Runtime and we're going to see if we can find that object. So it says it's at, okay, runtime, core U object. There it is, public U object, then object.h. Object.h. All right, so we could actually take a peek at this too. Let's just drag it into here. As you can see, it is a locked file. It doesn't want us to edit it. What we're interested in finding here is some hints at how they do the life cycle within the engine. So I'm going to dig through this a little bit and see what I can figure out. And I also notice if I try to edit this file anywhere, it yells at me and says you're trying to edit read-only files. Do you want to mark these files as writable? Which you can of course override if you have admin rights on your computer and make them editable. But it might bug out Unreal, so do some research before messing with these files. I'm not really sure. I'm just kind of trying to peek around at them. I don't want to edit them right now, so just fair warning. Okay, so I'm getting deep in the realm of a lot of different classes and stuff that I'm not sure what order they go in. Uh, so this would take quite a bit of research to really dig in, but I did find this object macros class, which does seem to uh, take whatever your flags are and turn them into white code. That way they're about as efficient as it can be, and you'll see that for pretty much every flag you can use, every one of those macros. There's the class flags, there's property flags, and there are just so many files to go through to fully figure this out. So I imagine the guys behind Unreal are, they're probably a select group of like two or three people that are all really good at knowing this whole thing, maybe a few more than that. There's a lot of code behind all this to get their editor all working properly and using this reflection system. And this is just one public folder. It looks like their .h files are public. And let's see, in the private, they have all the .cpp files, some each files apparently. So I'm not sure exactly what that reason is, unless they're exporting it and you only ever need to access the headers, um, because everything else is defined in some sort of library. I'm not entirely sure, but okay, so this is just the runtime stuff, source runtime. They have all this code, each one of these probably has a good chunk of stuff. So as you can see, it is definitely a ton of code. Hopefully this all makes some sense and helps bring some awarenesses to how Unreal does their stuff. I just guess I didn't 
cycle within the engine. I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to find that code even if I searched all day. If someone wants to point it out in the comments that would be awesome. That way we can all take a look. Alright well thanks for watching this video here on Code Tech Tutorials. I appreciate you guys.